Hi, I'm Mark Allen, and welcome to Mark Allen Cooks Your Dinner. Uh, I'm chopping some cilantro for our dish tonight, and uh, we are really excited because we're going to Alaska, and I believe we're going to Anchorage, and uh, we're going to be spending some time with a chef who really is making Alaska the new food capital of the world. Her whole family is, her daughters, she is, her husband. It's really going to be a great time today. Um, and we're going to be making uh, honey puffed shrimp. And I can't wait because I'm hungry, but I'm always hungry. All right. Uh, this is Mark Allen Cooks Your Dinner. We're on the air. Before we go to Anchorage, I wanted to say hello to our friend Lynn Sanders in Chicago. She's recovering from back surgery. Apparently, it's gone very well. We want to get you back on your poco stick and uh, jumping around. Okay, Lynn. All right, let's uh, let's bring our uh, our friend uh, Chef Kirsten Dixon in. Hello, Kirsten. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Alaska. Yeah. Hello, Mark. Now you're in, you're in a, today you're in Anchorage? In Anchorage today. And we just had a big snowstorm about uh, 12 to 14 inches of snow on the ground. So nobody's moving around too much. There's a deep snow everywhere here. Oh my. Um, and you actually live though in Homer, Alaska. So I live about uh, five hours by road south of Anchorage in the small seaside town of Homer. And um, Anchorage is sort of our, you know, reverse cabin in the woods. So we have a little urban house that we come to when we, when we want to go shopping and go out to dinner and do a few more city life things. Right. Well, as I said to you, we always begin our show uh, with a toast. And I should have opened this before we started. Um, and you suggested, I'm trying to figure out what to use here. Oh, I know. I just use this. Um, uh, you suggested a Prosecco, and I found a cute little bottle of Prosecco. This is Bostra Prosecco, and it's a rose, rose. Uh, roses itself are becoming more and more popular. And uh, what are you going to be drinking? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, I just have a very light, a light, nearly clear, near, nearly water white fizzy here with me today. Got it. Well, I'm going to pour this for me. And then, Carol, I'll ask you to get some too. <laughs> and let's the three of us toast as uh, we uh, begin our culinary journey together. There's Cheers. Quite Cheers, everyone. Cheers. And you know, for those of you watching, the reason why we're drinking Prosecco today is because Mark and Carol may be going to Italy soon. Yes, we are planning that. You're right. Mm. So uh, Mark's going to be making shrimp honey puffs today. And if you're interested in wine pairing, Mark, really um, any white uh, light white wine is really great. Sauvignon Blanc is a favorite of mine with, with shrimp. Although, you know, the rules are sort of out these days. You could certainly have a lovely summertime rosé. You could have even a red wine, but just nothing too tannic, nothing too heavy because it'll give, you know, it'll be a little bit off, off putting, but certainly sparkling wine or champagne or this Prosecco is a good choice too. Yeah. You got me a champagne. Um, <laughs> That, which I, I love. Actually, uh, you know, with wine pairings, uh, I like a red wine with salmon. And so I poached, in fact, we did a show. Uh, we were uh, live in Washington, D.C., and we cooked, uh, we poached the salmon in in red wine. I can't remember. I think it was, it may have been a Merlot or a Pinot. I don't, I don't remember which. So I'm, I'm, mincing our cilantro and we'll come back to that in a few minutes we should start we have some oil going i'm going to turn it down a little bit 
Um, that's canola oil uh, that uh, chef has uh, recommended to us. And uh, uh, I'm going to go over to our pot and you're going to tell me what to do. Okay, so first of all, for those of you watching, we're using canola oil because canola oil is virtually tasteless. So it's not going to impart any sort of flavor into the, the dish today. And it also really tolerates high heat. So now um, Mark's walked over to his nice, sturdy, probably four quart or maybe six quart pot. Yep. I can't quite tell. doesn't really matter, but you know, just a good sturdy saucepan pot type thing. And he's putting in um, butter, uh, six tablespoons of butter into the pot. Now in the recipe, I, I mentioned unsalted butter. And the reason I always recommend unsalted butter is unsalted butter is actually fresher than salted butter. So salted butter is a preserved product in the in the US and unsalted is always a fresh. So there's a, a different shelf life um, standard and you know hopefully that translates to a different flavor. And then you're adding in one cup of chicken stock too and a little bit Should of salt. Should I wait till the butter melts? You don't have to. I mean you, it'll all need to boil and melt but it, it one doesn't have to happen before oh. the other. All right I so, have uh, some chicken stock over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I almost never buy salted butter. Uh, I, I, I like the taste of sweet butter. And I know in France, I don't think they believe in salted butter at all. Uh, we Not should really. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it's like white chocolate to me. I don't believe in white <laughs> chocolate. Uh, all right, I'm going to pour in a cup. Mm -hmm. And there's some, you know, awfully good chicken stock on the market these days. If you're not into making your own stock, um, we, we, at our, I own two wilderness lodges in Alaska and we definitely make our own stock there. We always have stock in the pantry, but the unsalted butter is interesting. Um, so you might just get it. It's not really for any culinary reason other than taste and flavor. So, um, you know, you can, it's weird to, you know, Okay, you're putting in a tablespoon of salt now, adding that in there. And now, um, you really need that salt complement, you know, so to, to kind of make those little puffs pop. Now, the sea salt that I have, and you're going to find this interesting, the only sea salt that I had was black lava sea salt. Okay. Okay. Well, I think Mauna Loa is exploding right now, right? So we'll yes. just honor, you know, a little taste of Mauna Loa in there then. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to, I'm going to put in. It's Pearl Harbor Day. And it's Pearl Harbor Day too. That's true. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. I'm put so in normally. A little, little yeah. Just a, li a little bit of salt in there. And I don't know if that, I've never used black lava salt, honestly, Mark. So I don't know if that'll color anything, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, all, all salt comes from the sea, right? It's all N-A-C-L, but sea salt in the store when, versus, you know, sort of like a Morton salt, um, usually those other salts are mined in the ground and come up from the ground, but a sea right. salt's usually harvested from the sea. Uh, Morton's is, I, I tried to find uh, pure Morton's and they don't have it. It's because they mix it with some chemical and kosher salt. I couldn't find kosher salt without, without chemicals either. It's weird. Yeah. And right. I know. Says hello. Yeah. It's um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really strange. I didn't say hi to Heidi and Heidi's in Louisville. So thank you, Heidi. Um, hi, Heidi. <laughs> hi, Heidi. Yeah. You would like mm -hmm. Heidi. She's very nice. You would. They probably would. have salt in Louisville, uh, Mark, instead of your fancy California stores, right? <laughs> oh, they may. Uh, Heidi, Heidi just moved there from the West Coast, so maybe she could let us know what kind of Good salt job. she's got. Um, excuse me, this will help us oh. cook better. Okay, a compensatory uh, sip of the Four prosecco. Words. I remember interviewing yeah. Graham Kerr. Do you remember him? Oh, I do remember him. Right. He was my him. idol at one point when I was a young yeah. girl. I just, ugh. But, you know, you, you became a nurse before you became a chef. 
Yeah, well, you know, when I was young, um, uh, really becoming a, a, a female chef wasn't really such an option. It's easy for girls these days. But, you know, in those days, um, um, I don't think my parents would have been very thrilled if I had, even though I love to cook, I always love to cook. And I never, I didn't follow those intuitive little bells that ring in your head sometimes when you, you know, right. you know that you love doing something and you don't follow those, those signs. Got it. All right. Let's uh, take a look. Now I, I do have wood spoons. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love, and I, I love wood spoons. I like the texture, the, the, the tactile feeling of them rather than a, even a metal or a plastic spoon. So we're, we're almost boiling here. Almost boiling. So get your one cup of uh, flour ready while, or one and a half cups of flour ready while, or let's see, I've you're going to put that. in, um, yeah, one and a half cups of flour. This is bread flour. So it doesn't have to be bread flour necessarily, but bread flour has a, um, a, a higher gluten content, which will allow these to puff a little bit higher. Bread flour is always grown in cold weather, like in North Dakota, or, you know, it's not grown in the south of, of, of the United States, where soft flour comes from. And where, so, uh, where, where are you from, from the Midwest? No, I'm actually originally from California. So I ah. left, I was from the Bay Area, from uh, Marin County. And then I left there to go to nursing school. And I went to nursing school in Syracuse, New York. Oh, my. All right, now I shouldn't just dump this in. Oh yeah. Uh, or, did you read your recipe? Or I not? did. I did. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just That's teasing good. you. Yeah. No. Go ahead and um, so what you have to make sure that that stock is vigorously boiling. So that's a trick to this recipe. If the All stock right. is not um, really well well boiling, it's not going to cook in the same way. So um, so you How have there's that? a little bit of. A delay on my camera, but I think you got a boil there, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, so dump all the flour in at once and use that spoon to stir the to stir around, stir around to make up the dough. So you're really making a dough in French called a parachu. And parachu can be savory or sweet. Oftentimes we use it in you know sweet things like eclairs, but you know not with chicken stock, right? Right. Okay. Keep keep turning, keep turning, and you'll keep mixing until it almost um, you know makes something that looks a little bit like play dough. Yes. Should I? I'm going to turn the heat down. Yeah. Go oh. ahead and just take it off the heat altogether if you want to, but just keep mixing away. It's usually about a two minute stir, and you you know on the pan is hot, but on the heat you're also evaporating a little bit of that chicken stock. You're evaporating a little bit of the butter. To, to create a, a drier kind of a, a um, dough. And the drier the dough, is, the bigger it'll puff up. Okay. So how are you doing on your it's stirring? Dry. Stirring, stirring, stirring. I'm going to develop a bicep. Yeah, yeah, keep stirring. And you could do this in a food processor. We don't in our kitchen. We do it by hand. We love that. We love that exercise of doing it behind hand the old way. Plus, we don't want to spend time, you know, getting dough bits out of the out of the um, uh, food processor. Tom Martin says hello, and Tom. Oh. Actually, Tom actually um, uh, produced for the news uh, the Food Network years ago. Uh, uh, a piece on Kirsten and one of your properties. Um, uh, and you have two properties right now. We had, we had a technical glitch and uh, the, uh, the properties didn't come up, but um, okay. uh, we should talk about those. And uh, because people can fly up to Alaska after the snowstorm and have a wonderful uh, uh, kind of wild adventure, if you will, uh, How are, how's is, your dough looking? How, what does your dough look like? Let me see your dough. Oh, ouch. Okay. I don't know. It's a, yeah, it's a little bit drier. So I don't know if we had a little bit extra flour in there or what, but I, what I want you to do is start cracking eggs and take, you know, take it off the heat altogether. 
All right. And you can either put this in a different bowl or you can leave it in that bowl, but now you're going to crack in eggs one at a time. I All want right. you to crack it in one at a time and stir really nicely well so you don't cook the egg. The egg just needs to get incorporated into the dough. Okay. I'm going to move this to here. Yeah. And I have four eggs per the recipe. Yep. And it sounds like a lot of eggs, but you know, it, it it's, you know, part what helps to make this uh, puffy and, you know, sort of nice and eggy okay. sort of little uh, dough. So just one at a time and then now stir, 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 stir everything in together. Oh, those are gorgeous eggs. Yep. There you go. Keep stirring. Whoop. Don't stir the pot, stir the spoon. <laughs> yeah. So, so far I would have been fired from your kitchen. Yeah, so far you're out. <laughs> no. Yeah, keep stirring, stirring, stirring. And then after the one egg is pretty, um, you know, well incorporated in there, then go ahead and add the next egg in. And you're going to make a, the dough's going to be, um, you know, sort of, um, uh, it, it's going to feel like it's not going to like come together, but you keep stirring it. Just keep stirring, stirring, and it will eventually form a very nice, nice um, dough. Well, I can see that. And then when you add the shrimp, because there's a lot of water content, it should. Yeah, so normally, I don't know, uh, Mark, maybe either, you know, your humidity or whatever, just a little bit too much flour in there um, versus the stock, but... Um, normally when you were stirring it at the stove, it would have formed into a nice kind of shiny looking dough and the shine comes from all the butter. Um, uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get it here. You're doing, it's starting to look really good. All right. Should I add the next one? Yep, go ahead. And you want to, you want to add those eggs in one at a time so that the temperature kind of modulates a little bit. You're not you know, shocking the warm dough with a lot of like, you know, room temperature eggs. Got Hopefully it. your eggs are room temperature, but um, the, yeah. And then you would just want to make sure also that the you dough don't is, start. The dough is a bit sticky. All right. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, that's okay. It'll be sticky. So you want to take your spoon and just go, you know, like around, around, around like this. And if you have a hard time with that spoon, you know, in terms of being too long, just grab the spoon, you know, you know, by the, by the neck and, you know, make it shorter, you know, shorter distance. So you have a little bit of leverage there going round and round and round. That's I, it. I was thinking that I wouldn't be very good on your husband's uh, uh, dog sled <laughs> things. I well, you don't have to mix dough on the dog teams with the dog team. So I think you're, you're doing good. <laughs> Got it. All right, okay. I think I should add another egg. Yep, your last egg is going in now. That's looking really good, and that's really combining. Well, I have two more, egg, two more eggs. Oh, two more eggs. eggs. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. So um, for your listeners, as you know, as as Mark um, keeps making this dough, um, this is um, it's it's called pot of chew. It's a chew paste dough is also another name. And it's a really versatile dough that you can use for lots of things. The recipe we're doing today, we're actually frying in that canola oil, deep frying in the canola oil. But you could also bake them in the oven, or you could even poach them in a soup, like a like a dump, making a dumpling, Ooh. for example. So well, it's a super, super versatile, um, yeah, dough. I can see that parts of the dough are. Carol, can you get me another uh, towel, please? And I'll put that under here. It'll stabilize. Yeah, that might more. help, you know, with a, uh, you know, that's why a heavy pot is good. The heavier, like those big cast iron pots that French people use are, you know, they're. The holidays are coming. The holidays are coming up. Maybe somebody will get me one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But I yeah, can we see have, that we... The, the, yeah, I can see that the dough is shiny. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. And um, after your dough, after your last egg is all incorporated, then the next step is your grated cheese. Now, this flavor profile we're using today is really, 
you know, I mean, really, um, I don't want to say pretty French because we're putting the cilantro in it as, as a little twist with a shrimp, but you could use cheddar, sharp cheddar cheese, or, you know, you could use a manchego cheese, any sort of hard cheese with flavor. So you mm -hmm. can really modify this recipe also with herbs or spices. If you wanted to, to be spicy, you could put cayenne in, um, into the, the dough. Well, I, I noticed we're going to uh, drizzle honey on this after we've fried it. And I noticed in the market and even in my own pantry that there are, I think it's coming around. Yeah, looking good. Good. Yep. Uh, I should mention that I, I do these recipes cold. The, 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 our guest chefs give them to me. I look at them, I make, may make a change here or there, um, but uh, generally speaking, I do these, you know, cold, uh, which means that I've never done this before. Yeah, you're doing a good job. That's looking yeah. good. Am I back in the kitchen? Can I peel yeah, potatoes? Okay, okay, all right, we'll let you back in. <laughs> okay, all right. So What's cheese next? is gonna go in next. Your grated cheese. And grated I think today, our, yeah, we're using um, Parmigiano Reggiano um, yes. as our cheese. I use Gruyere often in this recipe. I really love Gruyere cheese. It's a yeah. French Swiss cheese, but it's kind of nutty flavored. Um, it, it adds uh, quite a bit. And you know, this recipe does have uh, honey drizzled on top. In Alaska, we have some of the world's best honey. Uh, and honey is a really fun, you know, for everybody watching wherever you are, honey is a, a really lovely uh, gift to send to somebody or, you know, your local honey is going to be different than any honey in yes. the world. And so that's, it's just a lovely, um, I don't know, almost edible souvenir of wherever you go. One of the things about honey that I like uh, is that um, it, 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 as you said, the local honey, I'm driving her to drink, folks. Um, <laughs> um, one of the things that I like about honey and local honey is that usually it's raw, and that's what we're using today, raw honey. Um, and it, it has uh, uh, local antigens so that you can... Uh, it can fight allergies and things like that. All right. Yeah, honey, honey bees are so amazing. I would really they love are. to get a little hive. That looks perfect, Mark. It looks exactly as it should. Oh, great! I I redeemed myself. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So I've got. Uh, I know I have cilantro to put in, and Carol, you've got the shrimp in the uh, uh, refrigerator. Mm -hmm. You're going to hand me uh, that. And don't forget your cheese. The, no, the, we put in the uh, Parmesan. Uh, oh, the Parmesan's in already. Okay. Yes. And then, you know, I always really want to, I, I really love to just um, put in some pepper in this dish. So if you have a couple cranks of pepper, you know, that's, uh, and look, if you don't, if you're not a pepper fan and you really don't want the pepper, okay, no, not the end of the world. But I just like um, to have a little bit of pepper in, in um, this particular recipe and I, then the cilantro yeah now mark and carol really love cilantro and it's it you know potentially it's going to change the taste of that prosecco a little bit but they're going to put in a cilantro now you can put in as much or as little as you want the more cilantro you put into these little dough balls the sort of greener they're going to be but um you know it's I'm totally the rest of what i did i think okay uh, the recipe calls for a quarter cup which is about what he's already put in. So he's adding a little right. bit more. And oh, you can I'm see that good. nice, really nice sort of big, uh, fluffy, rough chop. That's that's fine. It, it's um, a, a really um, forgiving recipe. It can, it can be sort of rough chop. Other things that people are, you know, I love to put into this recipe too are uh, little chives um, from my garden or maybe um, sometimes um, uh, just the flat leaf parsley uh, similar to the cilantro. 
I, you know, I was thinking about, you know, being in Alaska, uh, uh, your growing season must be shorter than, no? I'm, yeah, I'm, it's short. So we long, have a yeah, grow, yeah. we have about a hundred day growing season, really, you know, from the first week of uh, June, or we really plant the, you know, very last week of May. And then by the first fall frost in September, everything's done for. A lot of people in Alaska, and particularly a lot of people near where I live, have high tunnels or, or greenhouses, you know, the plastic hoop houses. And we, we have two, two of those hoop houses, which are um, really allow us to extend the seasons on, on either end um, of that. Um, but we also have, I live in South Central Alaska, so we also have sun all day long and uh, all night long in the summertime. So that extended right. sun makes some things really hard to grow like cilantro, uh, it, certain kinds of cilantro will bolt. It'll just grow up to the sun and never really leaf out. Got it. Uh, we've still got our oil going. It's not smoking. I've turned it down a little okay. bit. Um, yeah. I'm going to add, I think the shrimp next. Yep. Uh-huh. Fold in the shrimp. So you just want to kind of fold in now. So not, so you don't smash the shrimp up too much. So just now kind of I, fold it in gently. Okay. That looks like a little more than half a pound of shrimp, but okay, that's fine. Just, a, it's just a tad more. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I bought the shrimp and it was supposed to be, I told you before we started and I hadn't looked at it. Um, I, I had ordered uh, uh, the the shrimp to be deveined and 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 shelled. So, and it wasn't. Yeah. Now the so you really know we don't we don't dough. devein our shrimp we don't devein shrimp in Alaska. The water here is so cold and clear and um, uh, clean that the shrimp don't have the black vein, uh, similar to shrimp from, you know, perhaps more Southern locales, Mexico, et cetera. But, um, so yeah, so we don't devein our shrimp, but I do always save the shrimp shells to make a little quick stock just in some water for 20 minutes or so, throw the shrimp shells out and you have a nice little, you know, kind of flavorful stock that could go in anything when beans or, and rice Ooh, or, you know, anything you're using good water. Idea. Um, our, our son, who's a chef, makes a wonderful lobster bisque and he uses lobster shells to- uh, Probably to the same style. manner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's looking really good. It's looking all combined up together. And um, what you wanna do when, when you really make sure that everything's incorporated nicely, when the, the shrimp's kind of evenly spaced within the dough, then what mm -hmm. you're going to want to do is to get two tablespoons and just kind of dip one tablespoon into the dough and then get ready to dip the other tablespoon into your hot oil. Now, we didn't have a thermometer today, a deep fry thermometer, but what no. the temperature really should be is 350 degrees. If it's too hot, everything will burn. If it's too cold, things will just like float to the bottom and be flat. So we'll be able to tell, you could actually take just a little tiny bit of dough and drop it in there and see if it sizzles. And um, you know, if it doesn't, we'll, 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 get, we'll get that dough a little bit hotter. But, oh yeah, no, that looks perfect, doesn't it? Yeah. So there you're making your, your first tiny little uh, oh. uh, mini shrimp puff. Cool. And you might, yeah, you, if you have some, you know, tongs or chopsticks or something, because you're doing it in a wok, whatever, doesn't matter. But just kind of turn, turn Look those little. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> a, a, a bird's nest uh, strainer. That's good. Uh, you I'm just want to kind of turn. Over. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Look. Yeah, at that. turn them over. Yep, and you just kind of to toss and turn a little bit until they're nice and brown. And uh, they should take a few minutes. So, um, yeah, if, if it looks like they're getting brown too quickly, you can turn the heat down. If not fast enough, then turn the heat up. And then you I'm just pull them out. Way. Yep. And then just drain it on a little paper toweling um, while, you, while you're cooking the rest of your shrimp puffs. And that's what I'm going to do now. You can take one and, 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 you know, don't want to make them too big cooking them in a wok. Um, Is because, that too big? Uh, a, a, a tablespoon size, it should be, that should just be fine, I think. Yep, just fine. Yep. Yep, and your dough looks really nice and, and perfect. 
But you can always take one out after after it's all browned and just crack it open and see is it raw inside. If it's raw inside, we turn our, our heat down a little bit. And then so, again, if yeah. if we were if we were baking these, um, I would tell you to put your oven up to 425 for about 10 minutes and then reduce the temperature just to give it a little hit of heat and then reduce it down to 350 and bake for about 20 minutes. So it takes a little bit longer than the frying does. This is, but yeah. first of all, this is fun. Yeah, it's super fun. It's a super fun recipe. Oh, Heidi's going to make make the, the shrimp Heidi's puffs. And you know, them. yeah, I mean, it, you, could, you could make them with little bits of ham if you didn't want to have the flavor of shrimp. You know, the, it could be little bits of ham with that cheddar cheese and maybe a little bit of uh, hot sauce. That's a very sort of like a Southern food profile, but you can, it's really almost like the dose of palate that you can. Uh, uh, well, you know, there's, and there's flavored honeys. Um, uh, I have a, a hot honey, huh? I've got, we're going to put the honey on later. We'll, we'll heat the honey for 15, 20 seconds to warm it, but look at how golden these are and they puff up. I mean, this is amazing. Yeah, and this is Heidi. It is a super fun, entertaining dish that you can do for guests. They can, they're just as good cold as they are, you know, right out of the wok. <laughs> um, but you know, they don't have to be hot. They're they're really delicious um, cold as well. So they're a super fun, um, fun, uh, entertaining um, dish. So the I'm dough gonna... doesn't stay forever, like in the fridge, like the night before, but it could stay in the fridge for a couple of hours if you wanted to make it earlier in the day and then do these, you know, make the make the puffs when the guests arrive. I'm going to make a couple more balls. Another comment? Okay, I'll be right there. Let's put a couple more. Yeah, Dan's getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Now, I'm going to put these in. Hold on. One, we'll do one more right now. So how would you reheat heat these if you wanted them hot, but you could eat them, as you just said, at room temperature? Yeah, room temperature, they're just as delicious. But if you wanted them hot, I would do it in the oven. I wouldn't re-fry re them. No. I would put them in the oven, All right. but imagine, have... um, just imagine in your mind, if that was a pot of soup, a, a, a warm pot of soup, a hot pot of soup, and you drop the dough into the soup, you'd make the uh, little dumplings, you know, in the same way. I'm just using another wood spoon. So I'm going to take what we've made here and I'm going to put the two or three of these on, oh, they smell fabulous. I'll put two out there. They they really do. Look how gorgeous these look. Now, I'm heating up some honey. And I'm using a microwave. I'm going to do it for 12 seconds. And um, uh, I think I'll get a knife. A knife or just a spoon, just stick your spoon in the honey and then just drizzle it on top, you know, or a fork. You could use a fork and the fork will drizzle across, you know, a little bit more, a wider space. All right. Let me do that. They're still cooking. I've got the honey over mm -hmm. here. Oh, Howard Sandler. Howard, do you like shrimp? Oh, Hi, Howard. It's delicious. <laughs> Okay. And Alaska has Alaska has super super great uh, very sweet shrimp. Um, I think it, because our water's so cold. It's uh, a lot of the shrimp that I buy wild caught is from Mexico, and um, they're really good. And it's wild caught rather than farm raised. I just I I just prefer that. Um, and I'm going to use a fork and. Howard likes shrimp. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I just drizzled a little bit on. Uh, little I started bit. to say that, I started to say that there are a number of honeys that are flavored now. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and there's hot honey 
And I was going to ask you, and you already answered that question, if we could use the hot honey. The problem is that this was so hot that uh, it would have killed the uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. These are golden brown. I, All right. I, I, I personally don't know why people would make uh, a hot what, honey Carol? when... Hot yeah, it was spicy. It was very... Yeah, by hot honey, I meant spicy. All kind right, of spicy the, honey, yeah. And it's Okay, funny. everybody. We, we have to give Mark an A plus on his recipe uh, performance. He pulled it off. Uh, well, in the end, you. we thought maybe it was going to be lumpy, but it's not. It's perfect. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut into this because this is my favorite part of the show. Oh, that. And be honest. Tell, tell us what you think. Hmm. <laughs> Kirsten, I know it's your recipe, but I do like my own cooking a lot. <laughs> uh, everybody, did you understand what Mark said? I didn't quite get that, right? <laughs> He's eating. <laughs> wow. These are fabulous. Tom Martin says looks delicious. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank you, Tom. And this goes perfectly with the Prosecco. It does. The Prosecco is ni nice and light and... Um, and you know, this could be a, 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 a luncheon or a dinner, particularly for you in California with a lovely salad. You know, you just add the shrimp puffs to a, a, a lovely salad and you have a full, a full meal. Well, I honestly thought, oops, I'm going to take these out now. Uh, I I wasn't sure if you would get the shrimp flavor, but you do. I mean, these are fabulous. Um, okay, Heidi said for our next appetizer party, come on down. For um, sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. This is uh, fabulous. Listen, I, I've had so much fun with you. We We have to tell you a couple of things about Kirsten, and that is one, bring the cookbook back up. There we go. Living Within the Wild. We have a little promo that'll be going out um, tonight, and it, we call it The Call of the Culinary Wild, and <laughs> um, complete with wolf, okay? And um, uh, so we've got Living Within the Wild. You can get that on Amazon. And if you want information, I will have that up tomorrow on YouTube. There will be um, uh, not only the recipe, but we'll also have uh, a link to Kirsten's uh, uh, website. So if you want to go up to Alaska and, and, and uh, oh, you want to hear about the uh, lodges in Alaska, you're right. Take away the book and uh, Kirsten, tell us about the two, uh, your two uh, lodges now so um i i went i came to alaska in the late 70s as a nurse and i met my husband at the alaska native medical center the native hospital and we quit our jobs we went out to a remote wild place and we just started to live there and um ultimately started a little fishing lodge and then uh over the years, this is 42 years ago, 40 plus years ago. And then over the years, we um, bought different land in different places. Um, so we've had a total of, to date, um, four lodge properties and we've sold two. So the lodges that we currently own and operate are Winter Lake Lodge, which is in the mountains north and west of Anchorage. It's about one hour by a small airplane from Anchorage. So when I do come here to our little urban Piedra Terra, I have to put on bunny boots and march on the snow and get into a little ski plane and fly into town for about an hour. Our second lodge is the Tutka Bay Lodge, which is outside of that seaside village of Homer, south of Anchorage. And it's about the same amount of flying time, about an hour. Tutka Bay is on the ocean. And uh, there we explore everything maritime. We, you know, we, I really love um, 
um, cooking with seaweeds. We actually dehydrate the, the ocean water uh, right out in front of our property to make sea salt, our own sea salt, which is really oh. super fresh and clean tasting. And, um, and then at Winter Lake, it's a little bit more sort of maybe interior. So we don't cook wolf, but we do oh. cook uh, reindeer and uh, moose meat and, you know, other other things that are a little bit more sort of um, interior lifestyle. So uh, we have Kirsten, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Kirsten, uh, will you come back? Of course. Anytime. Will you? Will you? Okay. I, I'd like that a lot. Um, I wanted to thank your daughter, Mandy, because she sent me the, the recipe um, uh, the other day. And um uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, your family effort uh, and you have a Carly. We have a Carly. That's uh, kind of cool, right. too. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is fabulous. And folks, it's easy. You know, I made a complete dinner in a half hour. Now, I did have expert help, but I got to tell you, this is no. delicious. <laughs> it really, really is. I can't wait for dinner. So a mm -hmm. um, little early for me, but. We'll uh, we'll we'll do it. Listen, Kirsten, thank you. Hold on a second, uh, just uh, uh, for a moment. Uh, listen, everybody, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. As I've said to you in the last couple of weeks, we've had over thirty thousand downloads of our craziness, of my craziness, and I thank Carol a lot. I thank our our crew of of um, um, uh, Jennifer and Tom and um, um, and Marsha for helping. And I thank you for, for watching and letting us know what you think. You know, if you are alone, if you're single, if you're divorced, if a spouse has passed, this is a great place for you to meet new people. We'll see you next week. Lisa Levy is coming on next week. We're going to do some holiday stuff. We're going to make holiday s'mores. And we're going to do hot chocolate adult style. That's coming up next week on Mark Allen Cooks. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.